So well, we just got done with inside of the tunnel, but now we're on the outside. And I just uh, wanted everyone to stop and to see some of the Buddha statues that are very ancient, very old, some of them missing parts, uh, upper parts, lower parts, arms, particularly over there. Some of the artifacts that we still see here and what is to reflect here as we see some of the artifacts that is, um, I would say perishing through time. All things conditioned are subject to impermanence, Anicca. But for us living humans, I want everyone to reflect how in the West, Buddhism is not thriving, uh, particularly where I'm from in the United States, Florida. And I get to see a lot of monks in the West merge over to the East. You know, I've said this before, where Buddhism thrive and flourish, people will thrive and flourish. But if Buddhism disappears and we have less temples, less monks, less monasteries, less meditation centers, then our world become very unsafe. Because what we teach in Buddhism is the three-fold training, sila, samadhi, and panya. So the first thing is sila, which is the gift of safety. And right now in the West, a lot of guns, a lot of violence, drugs, addiction, trauma, abuse, alcohol, violence, right? Violence starts in the mind, up here. Violence starts with the Four Noble Truth, the Second Noble Truth. Not getting what you want causes suffering, agitation, stress. You get angry when you don't get what you want. You know, I want that girl, I want that guy, um, I want to get with her. Greed, passion leads to delusions. So. We got a plane coming across. So where there are Buddhist monks that give Dhamma talks to remind people to constantly never tired of reminding people to keep the precept, to give the precept. Because the human's job is to always forget and a monk's job is to always remind. You see the balance. But if, if Buddhist monks cannot thrive and survive based upon the giving of the people, then we're, we're, we're gonna see this type of scenery. The perishing, the vanishing, the disappearance of Buddhism and its statues and monasteries and the representatives of the order. So every time when I get to see this, it's our job as living humans to continue the good work that the King Ahsoka have done in an example, a world-class example, to preserve the monastic order, Namo Sanghaya, to do all that we can because the Sangha is the continuation living teachings of the Buddha. We are the living teachings of the Buddha. But we don't last forever, do we? And reflect on how we can preserve the world as much as we can within our own means, our power, within our own jurisdiction, and our capacity as sons, mom, daughters, fathers, siblings, and good productive member of society to contribute what you can, and that you have an obligation to preserve history, the richness of the Buddha Dhamma. Mm, Buddha Dhamma. But uh, as we go along, I, you guys will see more, but I want to put this into your head. I want you to reflect every time when we see an old Buddha statue, not made of gold, not golden color, but of cement, of rocks, you know, and there's only a few left. This is what we don't want to see. <laughs> and what we don't want to say is we only have a few monasteries left in the United States. We only have a few monks left. And when we talk about monks, they need to be good qualifying, authentic, and experienced teacher. Four elements according to what I teach for you to decide that this person is a good person that can hold the microphone to give a Dhamma talk that will liberate other sentient beings. It's easy saying the wrong thing when you're holding the microphone. So 
and the, the more people are li liberated, less greed, less anger, less violence, less ignorance. And so that's what I see for all of us and the things that we have to do. May you all be well, be happy, always be peaceful. Sa, sa, sa.